Good morning. Well, you can see it's a little bit overcast. This is gonna burn off though. It's supposed to be high 80s today here in Southern California. So I'm off on a bit of an ambitious ride for the shape that I'm in. I'm gonna be taking you along and I'm gonna be doing a ride that's in my backyard. It is steeped in history. We're gonna be going up and talking about the old Ridge Route Road. Come on along, you're gonna enjoy it. take long to get above the fog and the clouds it's gonna be a beautiful warm day I'm gonna be stripping off this vest and knee warmers pretty soon anyway let's chat about the old Ridge Route Road so the old Ridge Route Road was the new and improved way back in the late 19 teens to get from LA to Bakersfield a trip that used to take three days to get from LA to Bakersfield up distant canyons by wagon. Yeah, I can't imagine that. So as uh, needs be for freight hauling and transportation and cars were beginning to be a thing, right? <clears throat> they had to find something better. Hang on, I got to shift. Don't go away. All right. So they surveyed a route to make it as cheap as possible. So they had to do as little grading as possible on a ridge line that ran from what's now modern day Castaic toward Bakersfield. And it kind of ran this ridge top. And uh, really at the time it was a modern engineering miracle and it was really touted as such. Now it was completed in 1920 where they poured it in concrete at first it was like oil on dirt but it was truly a remarkable accomplishment Whew. this actually made this road made it into like a historic places registry historic roads something like that which is really cool because it's been replaced twice and it's kind of a forgotten road now I'm on the most traveled section. It doesn't really do much, but bypass the five and connect into some few areas, ranches and stuff. But I'm gonna stop here and talk about how it was replaced. Hang on a second. So you're looking at the Interstate 5, which is a eight lane monster, carries just tons and tons of traffic between LA and Bakersfield and points, points north, right? Well, the old Ridge Route Road really wasn't used for that many years once it was completed because they realized that that it really needed to be modernized a little bit and streamlined in order to keep a 6% grade, which is what they wanted to do for safety. Remember, these are really old cars and trucks. They didn't have very good brakes. And they weren't very powerful. To get a 6% grade, they really went out of their way to not uh, go straight up stuff. So this road had, if you added up all the curbs, something like 110 complete circles in it. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, at some point, the, old, the Highway 99 was installed, and that was kind of off to the left of the ridge route, and that exists still in part. And eventually, that was even replaced by what we see here, you know, the modern behemoth of the Interstate 5. But this is an old road, 
It's a largely a forgotten road and it's a gated road. And I'm gonna be riding up that direction a little bit and that's probably the next time I'll start talking to you when we start to get into the historic and more remote areas. So hang on, I'll be right back. promised all right so we are past that gate now that gate behind me there that uh, it's typically closed which makes it really nice because that really helps doesn't eliminate the chance of having cars here but really 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 reduces it shifting again whoa shifting weaving anyway I'm out here with buddy Tom buddy Tom up there riding along we'll say hi to him later did you know see right now I'm going seven miles an hour the original speed limit on this was 15 miles an hour when this opened 15 miles an hour it took 12 hours to go from LA to Bakersfield by this route but that was better than three days that it used to take up through the remote canyons through San Francisco up to Lake Elizabeth and across toward Tejon. So it was better than that. This is the wilder section. This is where the ride really begins for us. And uh, Tom and I, this is buddy Tom. Say hi, Tom. Hey, hey. Good morning. Yeah, fellow old guy. This is our number one ride on the gravel bikes. It's got everything. It's got, well, it doesn't have a lot of dirt. I'll give you that. But it's beautiful, it's old, the road surface just goes to pot <laughs> a few miles up here, so it's not that much fun on a road bike. Anyway, we got some climbing to do, I'll be back. Now this was a very remote road, but it wasn't completely lonely. Because along the way, along the old ridge route, there were lots of, well lots, half a dozen or so, automotive garages, um, motor lodges, restaurants, places you could stay the night. Because it was kind of a long journey. And those old cars sometimes, they need a little bit of help. There's not much of it left but these steps now, but all along the way, through these mountains, there were places you could stay. Names like the Tumble Inn, and we'll visit that. Uh, our, our destination today is, is Sandberg's Resort Hotel. And that was the largest, I think the fanciest up here. And you know, like most of them, they burn down over time. Either somebody starts a fire mistake or a forest fire comes through and then, you know, they don't get rebuilt, of course. But anyway, pretty cool. If you look through them along the way, you can see little signs of uh, where people used to be. Anyway, more climbing to go. Off we go. You know, as you're riding up this, keep in mind how hard this must have been back then. This was mostly excavated and graded by hand. I mean, pick and shovel. I've seen pictures of like mule drawn road graders. It's incredible that they dug this out and got this graded mostly by hand. Oh man. I think people were tougher back then. Anyway, we're coming up on a, an area called, I think it's called the Serpentine. It was a series of grades and corners before 
hit a place called Swede's Cut. Swede's Cut's pretty cool. It's a big old kind of gouge they made to keep the grade 6% or 7%. And uh, they kind of knocked the notch the top of a mountain and went right up through it. We're gonna go right through it too. So right now, I'm working my way up the Reservoir Summit. Probably the biggle, the biggle, the biggest single climb in the ride in either direction, actually. It's probably a 10 minute climb or so, but uh, the road's starting to get worse too, right? You can see it. And here, check this out. You can see where the original concrete is. You can even see the old reinforcing rebar because this is reinforced concrete and where they added probably looks like they just added a section of road to widen it because uh this was only 20 feet wide when they built it it's not very wide oh i gotta get climbing Mr. Gopher Snake, uh, he's a friendly, he's a healthy looking guy though, isn't he? Yeah. Okay, well I'm up on Reservoir Summit now. And it's not, a lot of times Reservoir Summit is the high point of the ride for me. Tom and I will come up here after work, we'll start at the lower gate. We'll just kind of bust up here. But we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep rolling down that way. We're gonna go, we're gonna go down there. So in the meantime, you can see over there that big green swaleback mountain, that's Libra Mountain. That's a nice gravel road, uh, nice dirt road up to there on a gravel bike. Beautiful up there, it's all oak trees. And then that goes over to Sawmill Mountain and then Burt Peak, which is the highest point in the whole range. Uh, this is the Saugus Range, kind of the Angeles National Forest the back country, if you will. And over the top of that is the Antelope Valley, and that direction is uh, like Tahon and uh, Tehachapi and way out there. Cool, anyway, got a big descent now. And then we climb some more, off we go. This is the Tumble Inn, and uh, I think of all the places that were up here, there's more of this left standing than probably any of the others. Sandbergs will be going there too, and that's got some foundations and a big wall. But isn't this cool, all this native stone made it, and the, that the archway is still here, I think is incredible. Anyway, we're gonna go uh, that way now. We've still got quite a bit of climbing. We're heading toward Libra Mountain. You can see we're getting closer to it. It kind of beckons, but uh, not today, some other day. Anyway, yeah, tumble in. Pretty cool, huh? Anyway, we're heading that way. You know, it is spring, right? You should see the flower. You should smell this. I don't know what is smelling so good. Maybe it's the lupin. Look at this. Isn't 
Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Wow. Really pretty. <laughs> so pretty. You know, I'm so glad I'm not just sitting on a couch. You know, like watching football and eating Cheetos or something. All right, well, we've reached the end of this ride. I am here at Sandberg's Resort. Well, at least the ruins of Sandberg's Resort. Fire, of course, took, took that thing out. But it was big, I'll show a picture of it. But um, this was probably one of the last places on the old ridge route that I know of before you started to drop toward Tahone and then into Bakersfield. The next section from here, so a couple miles down the road, you're gonna hit the existing Highway 138. You're gonna hit uh, Quail Lake, pops out right about there. Highway, our Interstate 5 is that way. So you would go down the next section, which was called the Grapevine. And uh, it was called that because of the wild grapes that they had to hack their way through to make the road and uh, when that was a trail. They always had to hack through grape. I can't imagine grapevines growing wild here, but apparently so. So that's pretty much it. There's not very much left here. There's a little foundation wall over there and there's some concrete there, and but it's a pretty spot. Anyway, that's about it from here. It's about a 26 mile ride back. It's gonna get hot and uh, we gotta get at it, but it's unfortunately you'd think it's all downhill. It's not, There's still a lot of work to be done. Oh, well. I found some shade. I'm back up at Reservoir Summit. So I'm about maybe a third of the way back from, from uh, Sandbergs. Thought I'd sit and uh, talk a little bit more about uh, some of the details to help you guys have a good ride if you come up here. Plus it's hot. That climb back up the reservoir from the backside, that takes a while. And my, my uh, Wahoo computer was saying 98. I don't think it's the air temperature is 98, but sitting in the sun, felt like a tortilla on the grill. And before I talk about the ridge route anymore, what do you guys think of these sporty new glasses? Is it me or is it too much? I don't know. I mean, kind of, kind of Hollywood, right? Got the chrome going on. They got the big lens. I don't know. I'm enjoying riding them. These are these are made by Tafosi. I think that means something like superfan in, in Italian, which is kind of cool. And uh, this is, I think, like their 20th anniversary uh, special edition. Anyway, they gave those to me at Sea Otter. I think they're pretty, I think the word I'm looking for is spicy. That's the new word. That's a spicy descent. That's a spicy bike. I don't know. Am I spicy? Are these spicy? I'm probably too old to be spicy. I don't know. Anyway, back to the ridge route. Um, so here's some things to know about this. Now, um, like I said, it's, it's, it was about 26 or so miles from um, the, beginning of, uh, the beginning of the ride down there in town up to Sandbergs. You don't have to stop at Sandberg's Resort, but if you do go over the top, it's basically downhill to a highway. All the rest of the of the ridge route that would have been like the grapevine section I mentioned, that really doesn't exist anymore. It was either built over from Highway 5 or 99 and through the years, there's you can see little sections of it, but you can't ride any of it. Too bad. Anyway, you can also shorten this. Now you can start from the lower gate uh, area if you're going to park there, don't block the gate. We usually park a little bit down by, there's a couple houses there, there's a dog kennel. That's a pretty safe place to park, but again, just make sure you don't block anything. If you're going to do the whole enchilada, you know, you can, like I said, park down in Castake at the Castake Sports Complex. That's a really good place to park, actually. Um, the gates don't close at night, not that I know of, at least, and you're not going to be there until real late anyway, hopefully, right? Um, and... Uh, there's a lot of activity uh, on the weekends during the day, so that's a pretty good place to stage from, and there's facilities there. There's nothing up here. There's not much cell service. I think I mentioned that. There's certainly no water or anything like that. And if the gates are closed, right, at each end, your buddies aren't going to come get you. So if you need rescuing, 
uh, it's going to be, uh, be somebody that's got a key to that gate. So some emergency services or something. This is actually a good ride if you're going to go up here to do, if you have something like a, a spot or um, the Garmin in reach or something, it's not a bad idea. Anyway, uh, the old Ridge route, man, it's just, it's just got a ton of history. It's such a neat road. It's a great gravel bike, gravel bike road. I didn't film a lot of the upper, upper section. It's so rough. When you start getting up towards Sandbergs, it is just chunks of broken pavement. So uh, that's about where you would not want to have a road bike. However, you could do an all road bike actually pretty well, at least up to Reservoir Summit here and, and, and back south. That's actually pretty doable. Beyond this toward the Tumble Inn, it gets rougher. Beyond the Tumble Inn up to Sandbergs, it gets really rough. Anyway, that's the old Ridge Route Road on a gravel bike. This old guy in a bike, I'm going to uh, sit here in the shade for a couple minutes, cool down. I'm going to hit it home. You guys take care now.